All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to tie one of my favorite caddis dry fly patterns, and uh, this one's called a called a mugly caddis. Um, it's got a great story, and that story is in my uh, Charlie Flybox book. So if you want to hear uh, how this fly came about, it's got kind of a cool cool story, um, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. You need to go buy the book and read it, and I get my three bucks. So thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to start. I've got a Tiemco 100 SPBL. Uh, this is a size 14. It's that spear point, super point barbless hook. And I'm going to start tying this with some rusty brown A dot unit thread. So I'm going to start this thread just a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye here. I'm going to just dress the hook shank all the way back to the bend. This is sort of a Cripply Caddis Emerger dubbing, or Cripply Caddis Emerger pattern. And the dubbing I use for it is Whitlock uh, SLF dubbing. And this color is, I think, called Golden Stone Nymph. Um, this is a uh, compound dubbing. It's got a few different fibers in it. Uh, some SLF fibers, some squirrel, probably some rabbit in there. Um, maybe some unicorn. It's it's hard to say what all's in there, but you can see it's got some shiny stuff, some some buggy stuff, some soft stuff. It's got a little bit of everything. And uh, I picked this dubbing because it'll shag out nicely on the finished product. So I'm going to take some of this dubbing, and it's a fairly long stranded dubbing. You can see the, the bright fibers that are in there. And I'm going to dub this up on my thread. And I really don't, I do dub it down tightly, but I don't really worry too much about the shape because I'm going to pick it out when I'm all said and done here. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a reverse, a reverse taper. So I'm going to dub from the front all the way back here. Kind of even a little around the bend. And I'll kind of fatten them up a bit. And, and I honestly sort of overdub the body on this slide. So you can see that's a reverse taper. It's fatter at the back and all this stuff hanging out, I'm going to leave that. I don't, you know, usually I'd go in and trim that stuff out. I'm not going to worry about it um, because that's sort of part of the idea of this slide. And you'll see when we're all said and done why that, uh, why that doesn't matter as I trim out the loose ones. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the underwing. And what the underwing on this fly is snowshoe rabbit foot. So this is a tan colored snowshoe rabbit. Uh, foot, and I'm going to come right down the center of the foot here. Kind of give you an idea of what we've got. You, see, you can see how dense that underfur is. Um, I'm not going to use so much the underfur as I am going to use the guard hairs. And I just sort of bundle it up, and you can see it sort of looks like calf tail hair, um, but it's uh, a little bit shorter, a little bit finer. And I'm going to take this clump and just sort of bundle it up in my fingers. And I want to make a thread base here before I get too far along. Thread base up to the hook eye and back to the front edge of the body. And that's just going to keep that uh, uh, this hair when I tie it down from rolling around. It'll give me a thread base to tie on top of. So I'm going to lay this hair in, pinch it in place and catch it with a few turns. And you can see the length's about half again the length of the shank. And I can trim that down if I need to. Then I'm going to cut these butt ends off at an angle. And I'll wrap down over them. Now to top that all off, the, uh, the snowshoe rabbit's foot has got a lot of good flotation to it, but it doesn't really have any variegation to it. So what I want to do is I'm going to top this with just a little bit of deer or elk hair and clean it out. I'm going to clump about like so. And I'm going to put that in my small stacker, like so. So this hair is not so much the wing as it is in a veil over the top of the wing. So I'm going to lay this hair in. And it's just a little short of the end of the, of the snowshoe. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to spin my thread up a bit. I'm going to put two turns around and tighten the thread toward me. You can see those butt ends flare as I do that. I'm just going to walk the thread. It's the second time the spool of thread is broken. I'll show you how to recover here. Uh, so I've got two turns on there and kind of started to pull on it and, it and it broke. I'm going to start my thread right back over where it broke off sort of lightly. And I'm going to hold onto that wing and tighten that back down again. And then I can carry on 
just as if it never happened. I'll go ahead and trim my tag ends out. And carry on as if it never happened. Breaking your thread is just part of the game. Not the end of the world. So now I'm going to list these buttons up and trim those out as close as I can. So you can see that wing is just sort of across the top. And I'll usually kind of mash it down to spread it out a bit. I've got a few extra long rabbit hairs back here that I'm going to trim out. Although I really, my natural proclivity is to trim those out. I really probably don't need to worry about it. Now I'm going to take another little pinch of dubbing. And we can see we've already got a taper built up here on the front end. So I don't need a ton of dubbing to finish off the head. I'm just going to dub this down again fairly tightly, um, but a little bit more than I really think I need. I'm going to pick this out. So if I dubbed it to the exact size that I wanted it to be finished and then picked it out, it'd be too skinny. So I'm just accommodating the fact that I'm going to pick some of this out. So I'm going to start this dubbing just behind my index point and dub up that tapered base right up to the front edge of the body. You can see that how that'll tuck the wing down a bit. And I'll finish that head out. Again, just a bit oversized. I'll put finish up here behind the eye. Trim that thread out. And then I'm going to come in with a dubbing brush, like so, or a piece of Velcro. And I like the Velcro. The Velcro does a great job of this. I'm going to pick all this dubbing out, and you can see I'm kind of sweeping toward the back. I'm going to pick across the bottom. You can see how long those fibers get. It gets to be a pretty shaggy fly. Um, one of the keys to this story, uh, the story of this fly, is um, I was on the Henry's Fork fishing through the last chance section, and uh, along with a whole bunch of other guys, and no one was catching fish except this one kid. Um, and he was catching a lot more fish than everybody else, and probably a lot more fish than he probably should have been, uh, as the case may be. And when he walked off the water, I asked him what he was using, and he showed me his fly, and it was a Nelker caddis that had all but come apart. And the dubbing was hanging off the back of the hook, and the wing was flattened down. It was not too far off from what this looked like, but it didn't start that way. So, of course, I had to go back and do it on purpose and make it look, look like I planned it that way. Um, and so I'm just going to sweep that dubbing back, and you can see how that'll kind of form a shuck with all those gangly pieces sort of hanging out, really pretty ragged looking. Um, that uh, rabbit foot underwing really makes the fly float well. You, of course, can tie it with uh, CDC, uh, CDC underwing as well. Um, like I say, the deer or elk hair over the top is just to give some variegation to that wing. But it's a ugly little critter. He's not a good looking bug. Um, but you can kind of get the idea of what you're going to get out of that when it's all said and done. Um, fun, easy. Nicest thing about it is, again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It's supposed to be muggly. Um, that's the muggly caddis. Hope you enjoyed that one. I'll come back with more soon. Come back and see me.